of 10 to the age of 20, I spent my childhood in the cotton fields of West Texas, in the Lubbock area, helping to do my part to bring the wages up of my family. And I spent my adult career in the trenches helping bring up the low wages of workers and help them move up the ladder of success. So you can rest assured that I'm not about to sit on the sidelines and watch a millionaire lieutenant governor and his Republican friends move Texas down the ladder and tell working families that the American dream no longer applies in Texas. That's not on my watch, and it's not on your watch either. We all knew that bringing change to Washington wasn't going to be enough. We know that we're not done until we bring change to Texas, and together we are going to do that in 2010. I have done some things in my life, and I've had the great fortune that the labor movement allowed me to do those things. But I've done many of those things, and they don't give me credit. They look at me as a girl who had to drop out of high school to work and bring her family support. I, have, I had great experience picking cotton. I wouldn't want to go do that again. <laughs> so they look at me, and they ask, if I know what a lieutenant governor does? And I answer, why, sure. A lieutenant governor makes millions of dollars in the private sector before taking a state paycheck, takes care of the fat cat lobbyists, and makes it his job to drive down wages for the rest of us. That's what Dewhurst does. There's something that Rick Perry and David Dewhurst need to confess. They balance the budget with the $14 billion in federal stimulus money. And they say they have cash in the bank. Well, what they don't tell you is that we have a $19 billion deficit. Do you know how many zeros there are in $19 billion? 11 when you count Perry and Dewhurst. <laughs> when they put their hand out to Washington to pay their bills, they turned their backs on unemployed Texans who needed help paying their bills. That's what makes them zeros in my book. Now let me tell you what's next. They've already sent out a memo to all state agencies to cut expenses by 5%. And believe me, that's just the beginning. They're going to try to balance the budget on the backs of state employees, despite the fact that we lost millions in federal dollars when they outsourced the management of chips, and we're at risk of losing millions more because of understaffing that has backlogged the food stamp program. If I'm Lieutenant Governor, we're not going to balance the budget on the backs of our state employees. We're not going to balance the budget on the backs of correction officers. And I am not going to balance the budget on the backs of teachers. That will not happen. is when you pay people a little bit more money, when you put money in their pocket, what do you think they're going to do with it? Where do you think they're going to spend it? And that's sales tax. That's money that goes into the economy. They might even be able to afford to buy a house, and that goes puts them on property tax rolls. People will spend the money where they live, and they haven't figured that out yet. As Lieutenant Governor, I will be a champion for every working parent because David Dewhurst does not get what working parents do. Education is the ticket to better paying jobs for our children. The Department of Labor estimates that 2 million jobs will created, be created by 2014 in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. But here's the catch. Because we pay teacher salaries that are below the national average, we can't fill teaching positions in math and science while one in three students never make it out of high school. And in communities across Texas, the state is closing schools for poor performance, pointing fingers rather than owning up to the fact that they have underfunded our schools and set them up to fail. But where, but where on Dewhurst and Perry's agendas do you find school funding? Where do you find dropout rates? Where do you find the need to recruit math and science teachers? Maybe someone should tell David Dewhurst that what the lieutenant governor does is set an agenda. We can't address the issues that 
part on the table, and there's no more important issue than the Texas economy. Even I can see that, and some people think I'm just the daughter of a cotton share cropper. I believe in Texas working families, and I believe that they're smart enough to see this. Now it's up to us, to you and me, to spread the word. It's up to us to reclaim the next generation. It is up to us to restore the economy. First is moms and dads. We have to look to what our children are doing and how well they're doing and helping them, reading to them, helping them stay in school, and then trying to find out why, if we're having such a high drop up, what we can do. Read with a child, help a child. That's what we know what to do, is to reach out to those that don't have the opportunities. Then we have to take the next level of responsibility and vote. My plan will create new incentives to place more math and science teachers in the classroom. We will invest in university-level nursing homes. And we will expand financial aid to ensure middle-class families are not being priced out of a college education. My campaign, Sisters and Brothers, is about responsibility, personal responsibility, community responsibility, and political responsibility. No way can I do this without your help. This race is not about me. This race is about you and me. I say God bless the American labor movement, God bless Texas, and God bless you. Thank you so much.